All right, welcome to a new video. I'll do a, a book review again. And um, this is also an opening book and it presents um, a black repertoire based on uh, the Taraj defense. The Taraj, Taraj defense is, is a defense to the Queen's Gambit. And we see the starting position right here after 3 c5. The initial moves, of course, are the typical Queen's Gambit moves here, and then Black goes for c5. Um, a couple of um, words about uh, the book in general. It's um, published by Quality Chess. This is the, I think, um, Scottish based uh, publishing company, I think, they're in, in Glasgow. Um, and um, they have a tremendous track record of great opening books or, and other great books. I don't think they ever published uh, an even mediocre book. Um, this is uh, part of the Grandmaster repertoire series, which is now, I think, on tel 10 volumes. This is volume 10. I don't think there has been one published after that. Um, and uh, all these books are of tremendous quality. So the name of the publisher is really uh, very much um, adequate. Um, the authors uh, of this book, it's a collaboration effort um, between, um, on the one hand, um, Jakob Argaard. He's a, he's a grandmaster for originally, I think, from Denmark, and now he's living and playing, um, he's living in Scotland, of course, uh, as his company is based there. And... Um, the second um, author here is um, Nikolaus Nitrilis. I'm um, certainly spelling this wrong, but um, I apologize to him in advance, in advance for that. He's um, a player and analyst from, from Greece, and um, he's, very, um, he's um, very competent in, uh, in computer analysis. You can see it in this book. It is very much computer-checked. But he's also a great opening expert. You can um, see this for yourself if you take some time to browse through the um, the opening, mostly opening um, forum of uh, chesspublishing.com. The forum is chesspub.com, and he's a great uh, contributor there on all kinds of openings. Um, so they both um, put their time and effort together to uh, to produce this book. It's uh, 340 page pages, yeah, about 340 pages, and it covers um, a black repertoire here in this opening. First of all, I'd like to um, explain why it is um, very interesting to to study um, the Tarash defense. Um, it has a huge advantage over almost any other opening in terms that it is playable against basically every setup that white might choose um, besides 1e4. So if you study and uh, know the Tarash defense, you are pretty much good to go against anything else but 1e4. I'd like to, to show you um, what, I'm, what I'm implying here. Let's say, um, first, first let, let's take a quick look at d4. Of course, um, you'll get the Queen's Gambit in, in nearly all of your games there. Of course, there are those sidelines based on Bishop f4 and so on, but they're not really dangerous. Besides, if you look at this, let's say white goes knight f3. You go, for instance, uh, here in order to reach the Tarash, very interesting, is c5. And if white now wants to... Um, and go for instance for a bishop f4 setup, let's say c3. You're very comfortable here in choosing uh, what you what you play yourself. You can easily build up the Taraj formation again, and it is arguable that um, it cannot be so advantageous for white to have a pawn on c3. So most of all, you get the queen's gambit with uh, second c4, and after oops, after e6. Um, and after e6, white will bring one of his knights out, and after both knight moves, you play c5, and you got the Tarash. Also, 
The Terra setup is very easy to employ against c4. If white goes c4, you just play e6 and d5 on the next move. And if he goes d4, c5, you got the charge again. The only pretty much independent way for white to play here um, are setups where white um, basically avoids playing d4 at all. For instance, he goes g3, but then you can, can simply continue with your same setup and ask basically ask why do you have anything better than d4 if he goes d4 in this kind of position you reach your tarash setup again this is also yeah this is basically the mainline position of the tarash so white in order to avoid the tarash would uh, would um, yeah need to play setups like let's say b3 here and then you have um, a lot of uh, possibilities you can just continue your setup here and basically wait for him to transpose again or white can choose to, to not to do this and then you're free to go let's say d4 and uh, this is just one line that is possible here so black pretty much against anything else but 1e4 can set up this formation if you just look at the black formation here not at the white one just it's a black one white black goes d5 c5 both knights to the natural squares bishop e7 and castle next move let's say this and castle you can basically play this against anything that white might throw at you even if he completely forgoes uh, to uh, occupy the center let's say d5 c5 knight c6 and now for instance if he wants to uh, avoid you playing e5, which is also um, a thing to consider, then he would go d4, you go knight f6, castles, e6, c4, and you're back in the tarash. So white has uh, basically, yeah, maybe this is a bit harsh to say, but he only has got second-rate alternatives besides allowing the tarash. So if you really um, are fond of this opening and um, study study it you have a nice all-around weapon besides everything but e4 so now the second part and the most important part um, is it a is it a good opening yeah basically the tarash enjoys a somewhat yeah dubious is maybe a, a bit hard harder word but it's it's, it's 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 considered slightly risky for black and um, this is mostly due to one line and this um, this is the main line also Let's say knight c3, c5, c takes d5, e takes d5, knight f3, knight c6, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7, castles, castles, bishop g5. This is uh, the old tried and tested main line here. This was um, introduced by Akiba Rubinstein back in the 19, I would say, 20s. Or maybe the first games were. 1918 19 or something but uh, he basically introduced this setup based on g3 and uh, later bishop g5 this is um yeah it's pretty much agreed that this is uh, the most principled and best way to to fight the tarash of course this um, pawn formation that black has very often leads to an isolated queen's pawn this is uh, most clearly seen if uh, if you look at the former main line here c takes d4, knight d4, then black goes h6, bishop e3, and then um, I think the main move here is uh, rook e8. Um, this is the old main line of the Tarash defense, and you can see that black has the isolated d-pawn on d5, and white has pretty much an ideal setup to, uh, to camp combat this pawn. He's got the bishop on g2, and this um, was the major discovery of Rubinstein's, that uh, the bishop on g2 um, pretty much uh, puts the maximum pressure on the d5 pawn. White also has the setup with bishop e3 and knight on d4, so he's got this pawn safely blockaded. Black uh, has a hard time to ever advance it. And um, while this position is not entirely clear, that white is really, really uh, enjoying... Uh, a large advantage is it's difficult to play at least and um, really hard 
to uh, to equalize if white knows what he's doing. So in this book here, on bishop g5, the authors um, suggest to play c4. This is of course an entirely different structure. Black advances his c pawn and uh, therefore establishes a, a 3 to 2 majority on the queen side. Black has three pawns here and white has two pawns. So um, let's assume that white is, uh, is doing nothing in the next couple of moves. Black will, amongst other things, prepare to advance b5, b4, a5 and so on and um, use his uh, pawn majority there. Still, the d5 pawn is an issue. White still has pressure here. And um, most often he plays uh, knight e4, e5 here to um, increase the pressure on the d5 pawn and um, later try to also play maybe b3 to, uh, to attack the c4 pawn here. Um, this whole line is known for yeah, for decades actually, but uh, always uh, had the reputation of being uh, somewhat better for white. The authors though invested an enormous amount of time and um, obviously it, it, it's only the amount of novelties and, uh, and really uh, astonishing ideas uh, presented here um, can only mean that they invested, I don't know, hundreds of hours to um, to make this uh, really an interesting and, uh, and also a very fighting choice for black. I think um, this kind of position um, easily allows black to, to complicate the game. Of course, um, if you look at the lines presented, there are a couple of um, very, very deep uh, analyzed um, continuations where, um, where white can exchange lots of stuff and you get even end games. They really um, went as, as far as move 30 on some lines, which is, of course, very unrealistic that you would get this in a, let's say, normal tournament game against, I don't know, a player rated 2000 or something. They will most likely be out of book after c4 or <laughs> maybe two or three moves later. I must say that um, I played the, the, the white side of the Queen's Gambit for, I don't know, 20 years, but... I never really bothered to, uh, to to look this variation up and uh, study it deeply. So if someone uh, would have played this against me, possible. I, I, had, I had bishop g5, this position here, numerous times on the board, but no one ever went c4. I pretty much would have, uh, yeah, would have been on my own and have had to think, think myself. So, and it's not a comfortable... Um, <laughs> picture to uh, if someone uh, would sit there and uh, knows all the stuff in this book and you need to find all this at the board that's a hard task um, I'd like to just show you one one sample line here that they um, analyzed in the book it's just it's just um, one example um, of um, really imaginative uh, new ideas presented here just a second I I need to look it up quickly in the book. Yeah, I, I found it. <laughs> Bishop e6 is a black's move here. And now white is at uh, some sort of crossroads. He can uh, play many moves here, like e3, for instance, or rook c1, and so on. There's just a couple of possibilities, but one move you'll certainly face, um, I've, I witnessed it myself um, quite some times because a teammate of mine is employing this line with black and he faced f4 more than once while I was present, so this is a move that is uh, really played um, quite a lot, I think even uh, especially by, um, by players who don't know the line in detail because it looks just very tempting to threaten f5 and this way um, increase the pressure on on d5 also it makes a good impression to to uh, just fortify your knight there and now the authors here present uh, an entirely new approach uh, the old move here is knight g4 
and this is maybe uh, somewhat better for white, they analyze H6 here. And I just want to present the quickly the idea, which is which is quite remarkable. White captures here. Bishop H4 is also uh, analyzed. Um, now F5. And now you, you could ask yourself, what is black doing here? Because um, if you look at this, um, should he retreat here? It must be a rather rather modest way to play, let's to say the least. What, what, what black is doing, he can capture here. D takes E5. And now black's, black goes for queen b6 check here, king h1, queen takes b2. And uh, this is a, a pretty amazing position. Um, white's uh, main try here is f takes e6. And now black, of course, doesn't uh, capture on c3 or anything, but just recaptures. So black has sacrificed a piece here, but uh, he got some pawns in the process. Black has got seven pawns, white only five, so black already has two pawns. E5 is very weak, and the whole position here is very shaky for white. The c3 knight is just hanging, e5 is hanging, and you've got a highly tactical position. Um, for instance, white could go rook, rook c1. takes here, knight takes, bishop h3, rook e8, rook c2, queen b6, and it continues um, some, move uh, from some moves further, just to show that it leads to highly interesting positions where you can uh, really surprise your opponent. I think it's very unlikely that they've ever seen this idea. Uh, I never saw it. <laughs> Just to uh, present one piece of evidence that it's rather an unknown line. <clears throat> all in all, C4 is, um, is a great um, fighting choice. And um, basically, if you um, solve the bishop G5 problem in the Tarash, then uh, this opening becomes very interesting. Um, just to show you quickly um, what are the other principal uh, tries for white, just to give an overview of this opening. Um, white can, um, in this position, also try other moves. The main move um, besides bishop g5 is uh, d takes c5. Bishop takes and then bishop g5. This is another main line. The main uh, difference between this and the immediate bishop g5 is that black has got the chance here to play d4, which of course is an entirely different uh, kettle of fish compared to the other line because black actually gets the chance to advance the d-pawn so you won't have to uh, fight against a knight blocking this pawn all the time. Now the main line here is takes on f6, queen takes, knight d5, queen d8, and then white uh, plays one of those knight moves to d2 or e1. And this is um, really an interesting position, which um, for a long time actually is considered uh, quite okay for black. It's certainly interesting to play because uh, black has ideas um, to pressurize the e2 pawn, for instance, and uh, you can also see here a general feature of this opening. Black has really a great development and freedom for his pieces. This opening really uh, gives you the chance to um, enjoy a free piece, uh, piece play. So I think this is um, all in all a great choice for, for, for instance, uh, junior players who maybe uh, like to or should uh, even um, try to improve their, their tactical play, their calculation abilities, and this is just great to have such a good piece play here. If you compare it to uh, some more, let's say, solid, but uh, also more, more passive openings, where you, you suffer from, from lack of space or, or you have to do a very long-winded maneuvering, um, I think this kind of position would suit many players much more 
um, compared to other openings that that are regularly played because you simply don't have a bad piece here in general if you look at this kind of position black has uh, very healthy pieces the only issue of course is the pawn formation and this is can just be evaluated uh, with concrete lines if white can do something against uh, the somewhat shaky pawns here from a dynamic uh, point of view black's position is just fine with all pieces active um, an interesting line that they present in this book and this is also a, a remarkable feature um, they actually present uh, two lines that are virtually unknown almost unknown I would say that really pose uh, serious um, problems for the opening and they actually present these options for white and try to provide um, decent uh, antidotes against them so they're basically sort of uh, yeah looking into the future what kinds of um, problems white might come up with so lines that are not so well known but are dangerous uh, are even covered here so uh, you're even good to go against some at the moment lesser known lines that might become popular I'm pretty sure they will become pop more popular one line for instance here is dc5 bishop takes c5 at a3 this is um, a really interesting uh, recent try I played this myself in the German um, <laughs> it was f quite funny in the German uh, uh, club club cap competition and uh, I played it with white I played this position with white and um, I only learned of this line because of this book which I purchased actually for, for playing this opening as black but <laughs> I found this line as being interesting so I tried it out and uh, my opponent actually he had this book but he hadn't uh, yeah he didn't find the time yet to, to study it so after the game he needed to, to look up what uh, what is presented there and uh, I can assure you that the the main tries um, there that are um, played up to now are not really satisfactory for black he also he didn't know what is recommended in the book and uh, got a really bad position quickly um, the authors actually present a remarkable move knight e4 here which is uh, I think pretty much impossible for for a human player to to find over the board he didn't even consider it very understandably and this uh, leads to <clears throat> enormous complications after um, White's response this might be Queen d5 or Knight d5 um, I don't want to really uh, go into um, detail here they present some really interesting and deep analysis in trying to justify this move Knight e4 but it's just remarkable usually you you have uh, books where the authors uh, simply try to sort of uh, hide the critical lines that uh, endanger their opening and they actually uh, put these uh, interesting lines here forward and try to try to uh, neutralize them this is one of the lines and another line that they present is uh, here is here d takes c5 which is also virtually unknown but seems uh, quite an interesting uh, try for white they um, do some really lengthy analysis here just to show quickly d black must play d4 he doesn't have uh, any alternatives here d5 is hanging so it's it's d4 knight a4 here maybe there are some other tries like bishop f5 but ultimately they didn't uh, make them work so this kind of uh, thing in su um, um, develops here and now white has uh, bishop d2 as an as an option or queen d2 and uh, i'm not quite sure what's actually more critical this one or knight oops or queen d2 not quite sure but just to just to mention this kind of line is also not very much known and um, they uh, anticipate uh, that this line would uh, become more popular as an alternative for white and try to diffuse this as well i think with quite uh, quite nice analysis um, one uh, also nice feature about the Tarash if you look at the starting position here is that uh, quite often against um, let's say 
not so theoretically um, um, well versed a position you would get uh, sidelines which are entirely harmless if white doesn't go for the Rubinstein um, setup with g3 here g3 or um, let's say he he study this kind of stuff and tries to present you concrete problems then you're pretty much okay instantly um, let's look quickly um, at um, alternatives that white might have a lot of players actually play e3 which uh, yeah from a modern perspective looks really passive but uh, actually was considered by uh, by dr tarash who uh, invented sort of this opening as the best reply okay knight f6 knight f3 and now the authors um, suggest a6 which is a very uh, very flexible move um, quite often um, black gets an isolated pawn here as well this kind of structure but the major difference is that white um, will develop his bishop just to e2 not to g2 uh, not to g2 and therefore he will have um, lots um, uh, um, clearly less pressure than after g3 let's say bishop e2 knight c6 castles castles b3 and then black very often puts his pieces and develops his pieces in in, a, in in quite similar fashion like this let's say queen d6 bishop a7 and so on it's just a typical isolated pawn position where black enjoys a really great piece play and uh, maybe even uh, some attacking chances on on white's king with let's say rook d8 bishop b8 threatening on h2 this is a very um, typical position where basically white has absolutely nothing it's just um, just a nice position for black to play and also take note of the really great um, peace activity here so it's just uh, just a fine kind of position for players who like um, to to have active um, aggressive peace play um, but e3 is uh, played uh, quite often on on an amateur level often white players would go knight f3 also and uh, now you have the choice you can uh, play knight c6 and try to transpose to to a main line or maybe better you can also take here knight d4 knight f6 and i don't want to want to go deeper into this black has already uh, equalized here and um, sometimes even uh, nice chances to take the initiative let's say a move like g3 here black can can easily grab the initiative and uh, yeah i think uh, black is already better in this kind of position so the sidelines are, are not so promising white um, can also try to uh, to deviate um, at a later stage let's say in this position he could try for for solid development certainly a decent move which uh, basically tries for this e3 kind of setups but with the bishop actively deployed here and now the authors uh, analyze c4 which is quite similar looking to uh, this rubinstein line with uh, 9 c4 and this leads to uh, very interesting positions where black goes for bishop b4 maybe exchange on c3 and then put a knight on e4 black enjoys this uh, majority again so he's got a clear plan of advancing his pawns there all in all it's a it's a nice uh, fighting position here for black one uh, one thing i'd like to mention is that you can also um, employ the Tarash uh, setup only in specific cases if you want to. It's uh, really um, very really interesting in terms of move orders. Let's say you uh, you usually start your game like this with black and white white plays g3. So you get the Catalan, black has lots of options here, of course, but let's say bishop e7, knight f3, castles, castles, and here black usually takes on c4. So let's say you like the lines presented in the book after g3, this kind of c4 lines, 
So why not play c5 here? White doesn't have anything else really than to transpose into the mainline Tarash. So the Tarash mainline here can also be quite an interesting way to uh, to play against the Catalan. If you are looking uh, for some way to, to combat uh, the Catalan opening and you're not satisfied maybe with these positions, which can be really, uh, yeah, really tedious to play with black. Black has um, quite good chances to equalize the game, but it very often will be a very, um, yeah, to be honest, boring kind of um, equalizing process. So if you want to fight more, then uh, c5 can be an interesting option here. And um, it will lead to a much more complex game than after then d takes c4. Also, you could uh, try to, to reach the Tarash via some uh, <laughs> some quite interesting move orders. Of course, the most straightforward way to play here would be e65. And uh, this way to head for the Tarash, but uh, there are even possibilities to reach it via c5. Okay, you, you might ask, how is this possible? Yeah, it's, uh, it's easily possible. Let's say white plays knight c3. You go knight f6, he goes knight f3, e6. And the next moves will be d5, knight c6, and so on. Let's say g3, d5, and white, uh, as black is threatening, d4, will have nothing better than this, and you're back in the g3, oops, in the g3 Tarash. So there are many, many ways to, to reach this opening. This move order uh, would have uh, the advantage to, for instance, uh, avoid, to avoid this kind of line. If you, for instance, know that your opponent likes to play this line, but he start the game with c4, you can try to trick him uh, into the Tarash uh, via 1c5. Yeah, there are lots of uh, move order possibilities here. Um, and this is really due to the universal approach of the Tarash setup. I can really uh, heavily recommend this book. It can be um, a really um, nice addition to your opening repertoire. And I would also heavily recommend uh, this opening in general for, um, for club players and um, and uh, junior players because it leads to uh, to really nice open piece play and uh, you're simply not in danger of uh, suffering um, with a bad piece the whole game. I see this uh, time and time again that um, that um, players uh, for instance play let's say the king's indian and have the dead bishop in g7 or play some some classical queen's gambit let's say let's say this kind and they are not really well versed in uh, in the details and suffer from the c8 bishop the whole game they play c6 and a6 and so on they don't do do the proper maneuvers here to free this bishop and this won't happen in the Tarash because you don't have a bad piece there. You never run this risk. The worst thing that can happen is that you get a slightly exposed d pawn and uh, if this pawn get, gets lost after you did some some inaccurate moves then you can still fight, uh, fight a pawn down but you don't uh, suffer the danger of, uh, of a, a bad piece the whole game. Yeah? It, it just guarantees you a free, um, a free, 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 sorry, a free piece play. Um, what I'd like to note is um, that this book really focuses on the main lines um, I mentioned, so it doesn't cover stuff like this here. This uh, rather interesting, actually, um, gambit line. This uh, this kind of stuff is not covered there. Also, it focuses uh, absolutely exclusively on the c4 line the c4 line here um, in the main um, in the main continuation here it, it doesn't cover at all c takes d4 this is really um, important to note so um, it's a repertoire based approach 
but this is uh, really sensible in this case because the lines that are selected very carefully selected are presented in um, so much um, detail that it would be um, would be very uh, hard to justify to um, to show um, all kinds of uh, possible sidelines here that are at least according to the authors um, not satisfactory anyway so um, it concentrates on the lines you you need to know for this opening to to work and uh, does a great job of presenting the ins and outs there um, I'll post the link to to further information uh, about the book and um, yeah thanks for watching and um, if you'd like to have uh, more book reviews or maybe even um, yeah a special subject or special book I'd, uh, you'd like me to review I'm not sure that I have the book but the, the book that you might suggest but uh, feel free to uh, come up with suggestions here yeah thanks for watching and uh, well see you soon with a new video